Hello, lovely to see you today. My name is Hannah and I work at Flying Fish Studio in Sheffield. And today we're going to marble with oil and food colouring. Um, so this is our third Future Endeavours workshop where we combine art with science and vice versa. And so I'll run through the materials that we need today and then we'll do the workshop together. So we'll need a tray, so it can be like a baking tray. I would advise one with quite deep sides. I've only got this one so you can see really clearly, but have one with deeper sides. You'll find it easier um, at the end to empty out the water. We'll also need a jug of water. We'll need some plain white paper. So I've got A5 size just because it fits nicely in here. We'll also need some vegetable oil. So this is just what I used to cook with. We'll want some ramekin dishes or some bowls, some spoons, and then some food colouring. So I've got some yellow, some blue and some pink with me today. And we'll also need if we want to make bunting, which I'll show um, you in a little bit how we go about making, you'll also want a ruler, um, some card, a pencil and some scissors. Okay, so the types of pieces that we can create today, I'll just show you briefly now. So depending on what colours you've got, food colouring will depend on the papers that you make. So we're dyeing papers today with our food colouring. And it's the oil that we use which creates these white areas. I'll explain a little bit more about the science behind this later. Um, but here are some papers. We can have some lighter ones if we use less food colouring um, or some darker ones. Okay. They look really lovely when they're held up to the light and the, the light shines through them. So we're going to create our papers and then from that, we can create whatever we'd like. So um, I started to make some bunting from mine. Okay, so I'll go through that at the end of our workshop today. Or it might be that you want to cut out um, shapes or anything else that you'd like, maybe to go onto a card or if you have any other ideas, it would be lovely to hear from you because these are just a few ideas and then you can experiment at home yourself. So make sure you're wearing clothes, which don't, it doesn't matter if they get stained. Food colouring is, um, is notorious for staining clothes. Um, so wear clothes that you don't mind getting dirty and also a table um, that you don't mind if it gets stained as well. So you might like to lay out some newspaper on your table as well. Okay, so to start off our workshop today, we're going to pour some water into our tray. And it'll be about, I would say, a, not too deep, about half an inch probably, about that much. Make sure it covers the, the tray. Okay, that's about right. And then what we're going to do is in our ramekin dishes, we're going to mix some of our vegetable oil with our food colouring. So you can decide on the ratio that you would like. I'm going to do about for every two lots of vegetable oil, I'm doing one lot of food colouring, so two to one ratio for my one. Okay, so <laughs> you'll have very colourful hands by the end of this. <laughs> so I'm just adding a little bit of food colouring in here. And I'll just show you. So at the moment, it almost looks like an egg actually. <laughs> Um, so I'll just direct this camera down so that you can see. So at the moment there's a big drop of food colouring and we're going to um, give it a stir. And what happens is the big drops of food colouring are being dispersed to smaller droplets in the oil. Okay. So they're mixing on a physical level here rather than a chemical. Because if I left it, then they would separate out again. Okay, I'll show you um, 
as an example, I'll show you in here. Um, if we just get some oil, okay, so got some oil in here. I'm going to now fill it up with some water. Okay, so now I've filled it with some water as well. Immediately, there's a separation here. Just so you can see even more separation, I'm going to add in some pink food colouring. Okay. So you can see the, the pink food dye has um, mixed with the water, but not with the oil. If I give it a stir now, it's going to temporarily mix together, but it is then going to separate. Okay. So when two liquids don't mix, we call them immiscible. Okay. So the food dye is immiscible with the oil, and so they'll separate when given time. Okay. Starting to separate a little bit more now. And it's because of this that we can create some gorgeous um, pictures using these properties of the food colouring, the water and the oil. And so I'm going to make up some more um, different food colourings now, mixing with the oil. So I'm doing about two lots of oil for every one lot of dye. So I'll just give this a little bit of a, a mix now. So yes, when two liquids don't mix, we call them immiscible. Whereas insoluble refers to when a solid won't dissolve in a liquid. So that's the difference. It's immiscible if two liquids don't mix. And it's insoluble if a solid doesn't dissolve in a liquid. So these are immiscible. Okay. So you can see here, the bigger droplets are now dispersed into smaller droplets. Okay, right, there we go. So I've done these two. I'm going to do a last one. I'm going to use some blue, I think. So a little bit of oil. I love this blue. It's a really, really deep blue. Whoop, oops. <laughs> that a mix. You have to mix it really vigorously. There we go. It may already start to separate by the time we put it on our water so we have to be quite fast with this. Right, lovely. So I'll move these out the way. Do make sure to put the tops back on your food colouring as well in case they spill and go everywhere. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use are, um, well, I say mixture, but we know that these are physically mixed but not chemically mixed because they will separate again after time. So we're just going to add some drops. You can use a pipette or just a teaspoon. Some drops of our food colouring. Let me show you there. To our water. Okay. So the oil and the water, they repel. So we'll get bubbles of colour where the food colouring has mixed with the water, but then you'll get white areas where the oil is, as this won't have mixed with the water. Okay. So I'm going to do a little bit of blue. I think I'm going to have to mix this one up again just because it's already separated. I'm just going to do some of this. It's one of my favorite parts is just playing with the color. You'll see that sometimes um, some of the color sinks to the bottom. That's okay. It does mean that um, it won't be picked up because we're just using the surface of the water um, to put our paper on. So I'm just giving it a little bit of it. We don't want to mix it too much because um, then 
you won't get the distinct colours, but I'm just mixing it around just a little bit. Okay, and then what we're going to do is you'll need some newspaper because of how oily it is, um, we'll want to cover our table in quite a few layers of newspaper. And then I'm going to lay some plain paper on top of my newspaper. Okay, this is just because um, if we don't and we put our pieces, once we've made them, straight onto the newspaper, you'll find that sometimes the newspaper print comes through. So like this one here, it actually came through, which can be quite a nice effect, um, but it may be that you don't want that effect. Okay, and this is just our normal coloured one, in which case, lay some plain paper over the top to stop that from happening. If you have any questions at all, do just feel free to comment as we go along. It'll be lovely to hear from you. Or afterwards, um, you can comment on the video or you can contact me at Flying Fish Studio and I'll answer any questions that you have at all. So we're now going to get our paper and I'm going to lay it here, okay? After a few seconds, I'm then going to peel it off and pop it onto my plain paper. And it's going to be left here to dry for a couple of days. So the paper is very oily at first, but as it absorbs some of the oil, um, you will be able to use it eventually. After a few days, you'll be able to turn it into your bunting or your cards or whatever you'd like to turn it into. So if I just hold this up to the camera now without it dripping too much, okay there we go so i've now colored my paper after um a little while you can use just a paper towel to dab off some of the excess oil you don't want to do it straight after otherwise it'll remove some of the color um, But after a little while you can try dabbing with a paper towel okay so i've done my first piece now i could if i'd like and um, add more color to here which i think i will do it needs a bit more colour or you can try just straight away putting another sheet of paper in, taking it off and, and seeing how that turns out. So I'm just mixing this again so that the droplets are being dispersed in the oil. You'll find that some colours work better than others, that you have certain preferences. I quite like the red, it gives quite a a nice bold colour. Well, it's pink actually, but it, it looks red in here. So you can experiment with different ones. You can experiment with the ratio as well of food colouring to oil. Okay. You can mix the colours of food colouring as well. So if you wanted like an orange, I could have mixed like the red with the yellow. I experimented with that. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more yellow now. The same thing, make sure you've got an area ready here to pop your piece on. I'm going to pop some newspaper underneath to stop it from soaking through. Getting my smaller sheet of paper, laying it on top, letting it soak through, leaving it a few seconds. and then peeling it off. Lovely. Okay, those yellows have come out really bright on this one. Okay, there we go. Lovely, so once we've made a few that we like, I'm going to leave them for a few days. Now I've got some before that I've already made up just so that I can show you what we can do with them once they're dry. So I'm just going to Move this out of the way. <laughs> you have to be really careful with this um, so that it doesn't spill anywhere. Okay. So let's go with this here. So just showing the bunting that um, I briefly showed before. 
Okay, so this is made from um, the paper that we've coloured and then just some embroidery thread. Or you can use any string, anything that you've got around your home. And to do this, we'll want to start by making a triangular template. And to do that, I've just got a little scrap piece of card. And in order to get the triangle symmetrical for our bunting, we're going to want a ruler. And I'm just going to measure out the width that I want the top piece to be. Sorry, the top length. So this is eight centimetres. For my next piece of bunting, I might do a smaller one. So I'm going to measure out six centimetres here and do a little line. And then I'm going to go halfway from whatever I've chosen. And halfway is three. So I'm going to put a mark on three and on six. If you want really big bunting, then just do like, um, you know, eight and 16 or five and 10. So I'm going to work my way down the paper, measuring out these two numbers. So for me, it's three and six. I'm going to do at least three lots of these measurements. Okay. And then I'm going to draw a line, joining all of these up together. So it should be a nice straight line. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is decide how um, long I want my triangle to be. So do we want it really short up here? Or do I want it really long down here? Okay, so I'm going to choose a midpoint and I think I'm going to choose it just there. And I'm going to join up with here. And that way I'll have an equal, um, an equal triangle. Well, not an equilateral, just um, that the, the two sides are equal. Okay, means that they'll be symmetrical, which is just what we want for our bunting. I've joined it up where I'd like, and now I'm just going to cut out that triangle. I'm going to use this as my template. I've used cards just because it's going to be easier to draw around on paper if I've got something a bit more solid. And I'm going to choose one of my papers that I made a few days ago. Choose one that I like. So, ooh, thinking, do I want the newspaper print one? I think I might. So this one that I left over the top of newspaper, okay, it's got some print on there that it's soaked in. So I'm going to choose a section of it that I like. I'm going to do this area here with the bright yellow. I'm going to draw around it with a pencil. And then I'm just going to cut my triangle out with a pair of scissors. I am going to cut slightly within the line just because I don't want any of the pencil showing. I'm just cutting around carefully. If your triangle, all of the sides are quite similar length, like this do make sure that you get the top the right the right way round and um, so this is the the top and then these two sides are equal on mine okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some embroidery thread okay pop it inside a needle and then this paper now it's all um absorbed the oil it's actually um, a great uh, texture, I'm not sure that's quite the right word, um, but it's great to just pop your needle through like this. Make sure you don't <laughs> stab your finger on, the, on your way through. Um, but we're just going to pop it through here. You can even create um, different patterns. So you could sew whatever you like on here. Obviously it's a bit harder than sewing onto um, embroidery material but it is possible and then I'm just going to pop it through the other side and pull it through okay and then if I keep doing this with lots of my pieces you can get a whole long line of them and they look really nice like hung in the window so the light can shine through 
and you can see the colours well. Okay, and then you can move it around depending on where you'd like it on your thread. Lovely, so that's everything for today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions at all, do just feel free to get in touch. It would be lovely to hear from you. Um, so next week is our fourth Future Endeavours workshop, so it would be lovely to see you again then. And I hope you've enjoyed and enjoy experimenting. See you later. Bye.